Hello guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm doing a collaboration video with Nick. His channel's in the description. He basically makes content creation uh, videos, you know, advice videos, stuff like that, similar to me. He's going to be teaching you guys how to create video graphics uh, in Sony Vegas. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Uh, hit that thumbs up button. Let's get into it. Thanks, Steven, for the introduction. I appreciate it. What is going on, guys? For this video, of course, we're going to have to be in front of the computer. So let's head over to the computer and I'm going to show you how to make video graphics in Sony Vegas. So the first thing that we're going to do once we have Sony Vegas open is we are going to go to the media generators. What we're going to do inside of the media generator is we're going to find a solid color. In this situation, we're going to start with white. I'm going to drop it into the timeline. And of course, you know, because on YouTube, you know, we want everything to come and go, you know, relatively fast. I'm going to keep this at 10 seconds. I might even shorten it down. Let's see here. It would slide in. You know what? I'm actually going to take this down to about seven seconds to make everything go just a little bit faster. Okay, once I have the media generated solid color background, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the crop tool here in Sony Vegas. I'm gonna go to mask down here and I'm going to click on this first keyframe and then I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. Now, as I pull this rectangle tool in, you'll see on my screen that it is creating a bar. Right, this is where I'm going to put the main highlight text for this. And then I'm going to scoot it down. I'm going to put it right about here because I'm going to create a sub bar as well. And I'm going to do that by going up to the media generator and I'm going to pull down a red version of the solid color. I'm going to make it the same size for now. I'm also going to go into the crop option, go to the mask, go to the first keyframe. And then with this, I'm also going to mask it off where I want and I'm going to slide the mask down to exactly where I want it to be. Now, in this particular situation, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap so that you'll be able to see the video playing in the background there as well, just to show that it is an overlay for the people that are watching the video, just kind of, you know, adds a little more depth to the whole thing. So once I have this part in place and I know exactly what the graphic is going to look like, now I want to animate it. And, and after I animate it, I'll add some text to it. So the first thing I know is that I want the white bar to come in first. So I'm going to scoot this back a little bit and I'm going to go into the crop tool again and I'm going to go down. I'm going to make sure that I have mask selected and I'm going to double click here to create an additional keyframe. Now what that is going to do is that's going to put the keyframe at the resting point of your graphic. So basically whatever motion is going to happen, this is where it's all going to stop. Right, so I want to make sure that the full width is expanded at that time. Now I'm going to go back to the first keyframe. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to pull this mask all the way back. Now what's going to happen is Sony Vegas is going to fill in the gap between this keyframe and this keyframe. And by doing that, it creates motion. So I'll show you what it's doing right here. Okay, you see how it brings that bar across? That happens just from using that mask, okay? Now, I know in advance, because I've made a lot of these, so I know that I also want it to go out in a similar way. So since it's gonna be at the resting point here, I'm gonna continue that resting point here towards the end. I'm gonna put it in a similar spacing so that it goes out around the same speed that it comes back in. Then I'm gonna go to the first, save myself some work here. I'm going to right click. I'm gonna hit copy. And then I'm going to click here at the very end I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit paste. Now what that's going to do is that's basically pasting that original keyframe in. So if we go back to the video now, you'll see as I hit play, now it's going to pull it back out. So it comes in there and then later in the track, it goes back out there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to animate the red one. So what I want to do is I want to find the place in the timeline that this one stops. Now, you know, what? we're actually not even going to let it stop yet. We're going to take it about three quarters of the way there and then we're gonna start bringing in the red. So we do the same exact thing on the red, and I'll speed that process up here so you don't have to wait for it. Okay, so now what we have here is we have the red and the white bars coming in, and then now we're gonna add some text to make this interesting. And I'm actually going to go into the media generators as well for this one and I'm going to go to titles and text. 
Now, of course, Sony Vegas has a lot of built-in options. I like to keep things simple. You know, you can animate it, have it drop in, or, you know, whatever it is that you want, but I like to keep things simple to make it really easy for the viewers to understand what it is that is happening. So I'm going to drag one of these text generators down and I'm going to change the text to whatever I want it to be. In this situation, I'm just going to type in, let's make it all caps, subscriber giveaway. I'm gonna right click and hit select all and I'm going to reduce the size quite a bit there. I'm going to center it and we're gonna keep it in Verdana for now and I'm going to make it bold. Now, I'm also just out of personal preference, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go down to the advanced tab and I'm going to bring in the line spacing just, uh, or I'm sorry, the tracking just a little bit, just to kind of tighten everything up just a tad. Let's say we're gonna take this to 150. Now, while I have this on the screen, I'm going to change the color here to red for that text. And then I can just grab it I have to make sure this, this dialog box is still open and then I can just grab this and I can pull it down into place. And you can see how it's starting to come together here now that, I, now that I'm dropping the words in there. So basically as this would come in, in this situation, we're gonna go ahead and animate this as well. So what I want to happen is I want this bar to come in and then I want the text to fly in from that same side, almost like the bar hits something and causes it to come out. So I'm going to go to where it is in my timeline that that bar hits right there. And right when that hits, I want this subscriber giveaway to slide out of the side. Now, in order to do this, we're not using masking for this situation. What we're gonna do is we are going to go into the crop and here, just in the normal positioning, right? I'm going to click on the first keyframe. And then just like we did in the mask, I'm going to click here for my resting point where I want the text to end, right? And that's gonna lock that in. And then I go back to the beginning then I'm gonna hit this so it only moves things left and right instead of up and down. I want this to come in from that side. So I'm going to move it to the edge of the text there. And now we'll check the speed, see how it all comes together. Okay, so you can see there how it's starting to go together. Now, in this situation, you know, I, I think I want this a little bit faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go into the white bar and I'm going to bring those keyframes closer together. And when I do that, that's gonna make everything on that particular layer of the graphic, it's gonna make everything happen faster. All the movement is gonna happen faster. So you gotta keep this stuff going, right? You gotta keep these things moving. So now, once again, I find out where that is in the timeline. I go ahead and move that. Go ahead and have the red one coming in. So there we go, a little bit faster, a lot more movement going on there. And then for the bottom bar here, you know, if you want to use that for, in this particular situation, if you want to use that for additional information, like let's say uh, active on channel, active in comments. Okay, and then we're going to select all here. I'm going to bold this, and because it's going on red, I'm going to keep this as white. And we see here when I click on it that it is way too big, so I'm going to have to pull this down to a reasonable size and I actually want it to be just a little bit smaller than the subscriber giveaway. So now that I have that, then I'm going to pull this in and I'm going to drop it into place. So white bar comes in, red bar comes in, subscriber giveaway comes in. And as that is coming in, we are going to drop in this as well. And this is gonna come in from the other side. So here's the whole intro and you see it comes in and you have a subscriber giveaway graphic. Now, because I'm picky in this situation, I would actually go in and I would actually recreate some of this because I'm, I think that the uh, bar is just a little bit too big in that situation. Then I would copy that. I would put it here in the beginning part should probably still be okay. Yeah, it actually kind of gives it more of like a like it's a squirting in type of uh, feel to it there. But the end result, you know, it comes out looking great. Okay, so let's say that you have a video and you want to transition from one scene into another scene and you want to do it in a creative way, right? Because Sony Vegas, they have their own transitions and those are awesome, but you can actually use the media generated things in order to make those transitions even cooler. 
So let's say we go up to a solid color and I'm just gonna grab black for now. I'm gonna pull this in and I'm gonna change the color to just something a little more pleasant. It's not as obnoxious. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this in. Now, if you have Photoshop or I'm actually, I'll give Steven a blank PNG that you can download. And what you can do is you can take a blank PNG graphic, right? This isn't rocket science. This isn't anything magical, but it actually comes out pretty cool in this situation. So let's say we take a blank PNG graphic and we drop it in. I'm going to move this to six, drop it in again over here. And this is transparent, right? I exported this straight out of Photoshop. You can do this in GIMP or any other software that supports PNG graphics. But as you can see right here, I have it fading in and I have it fading out, right? So in this situation, if this was a real life video that I was putting together, I would put my cursor here to make sure that when everything happened, that during the transition, it was actually covered up, right? So here's where the fun is. So you take that solid color, you drop that in, you drop in a blank, and then you can go into your transitions. And let's say that you want to do a push, right? So you can just drop that in there and we can push out to the side here. Right, and the cool thing about this is if you are doing any type of branding for your channel, then you can use an image here with your logo on it. You can use a texture that represents your brand or that represents your channel. Um, you can use a color that represents your brand or represents your channel. I mean, the, the idea for what you can use back here is limitless. I mean, you can even get creative with the videos that you're creating and use one of those videos, you know, put certain effects on it or something like that and use one of those videos as this point in the transition. But what's cool is you can do this and you can use this with all of the transitions that they have, right? So you can have the blue come in like that. So instead of it just going from, you know, scene to scene, you're actually creating that uh, temporary color in the middle that really makes things stand out and look cool. You know, it just gives it a different look than just transitioning from scene to scene. Now, if you are wanting to make video graphics for another purpose, let's say that you are making something that you wanna use in all of your videos and you don't want to recreate the graphic every single time, all you have to do is delete everything Make sure the background is completely empty. You have nothing else going on. You can even delete the other tracks if you want to. Isolate the area that you want to render out, which would be that. And you would actually export this as a quicktime.mov file, right? In this situation, I'm going to go transparent, but how you would set this up, and you have to have QuickTime installed in order to be able to do this, but this is exported as high definition and I keep my frame rate normal but I changed the video format to PNG, right? So it's a transparent PNG is how it is, is how it's exporting. And it is the 32 color. And when you export this, it actually makes the background transparent, which is pretty cool. And then you can drop it into anything you want. So if you're working on your channel branding, for example, then, then you could, bring this stuff in and you could say a transition, right? Branded. So I'm just gonna pretend that there's a logo or something on here, right, by calling it branded. So what's cool about this is after you have it created, then you don't have to recreate everything. Okay, so we save that as a branded transition, right? And you can see right up here, basically, if you click on it, then you get the preview. So I have two clips and I'm going to transition from one clip to another and I don't want to recreate that thing every single time. So what I do in that case is I grab the asset that I already created and I drop it into my timeline. And then I'm gonna right click it, go to properties. And you can do the same exact thing with the lower third that you create, with the subscriber graphic that you create. You can export it the same exact way. And then you go to media, alpha channel, straight, unmatted, and then hit okay. 
And you'll see here the background is now transparent. So it makes for a smooth asset that you can use over and over again without having to recreate it. You can just drop it into your videos. Now, if you are not familiar with me, if you've not been on my channel yet, make sure that you head over to youtube.com slash Nick Nimmin. Stephen will also put a link to me down in the description below. I basically help YouTubers grow their channels and make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you head over to my channel and check me out. And that's pretty much it. Not too difficult, right? Thanks, Stephen, for letting me make an appearance on your channel. I really appreciate it. Back to you. And yeah, that's basically the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, Nick's channel will be in the description. My name's Steven, and I'll see you in the next one.